Throughout the Mesozoic era, the dinosaurs ruled as the dominant land vertebrates for over 140 million years, evolving an incredible diversity of forms, fulfilling various ecological niches as seen in the fossil record. But often overlooked is another clade of reptiles that not only coexisted with the dinosaurs, but were also some of nature's largest apex predators. The crocodiliforms, first emerging 225 million years ago, descending from earlier crocodilomorphs, exhibited a wide variety of features, including fully terrestrial and aquatic adaptations, as well as possessing many key features that defined later true crocodilian descendants. This video is a highlight of some of the worst prehistoric crocodilians that you could run into and your chances of surviving one such encounter. We'll rank each chance of survival from 1 to 10, with 10 being likely to survive and 1 making you reevaluate your life choices. We'll also include some honourable mentions. We will We'll start with members you are most likely able to survive an encounter from, starting with Pachycercus capillami. This crocodilian measures in at 50 centimeters or 20 inches, and weighs between 1 to 3 kilograms thanks to its slender frame and lack of osteoderms along its body. Possessing heterodont teeth with molars almost identical to extant mammals, Pachycercus was likely herbivorous as its main diet and not a strict carnivore. An encounter with Pachycercus would likely be non threatening despite its broad skull and large teeth, Pachycercus lacks the size, strength and predatory instincts to inflict any serious damage. A simple kick would be enough to punt this little shit into oblivion, which gives this a rating of 10 out of 10 for your chances of survival. Going to our next member, Isis for Dia Duncani, which could grow to 1 meter or 3.3 feet and weigh around 5 kilograms. An interaction would involve a failed ambush predation attempt along a riverbank, possessing neither the required size or strength to threaten a human-sized target, giving a 10 out of 10 survival rating. Anatosuchus, or the duck crocodile, no guesses as to why, was an active predator of both marine and terrestrial ecosystems, able to deploy its incredible array of sharp recurved teeth and a fully flexible lower jaw thanks to an interdigitating connection at the symphys. But at just 0.7 meters or 28 inches, no human worth their existence would be threatened by this duck-billed reptile, so I present you another 10 out of 10 survival rating. The size of a small canine, Cymosuchus could reach 0.75 meters or 29 and a half inches, its short and deep face resembling that of modern pugs, and armed with teeth more suited to a herbivorous diet. Despite its size, Cymosuchus has a robust build covered by thick osteoderms and strong arms equipped with large, sharp claws, easily capable of tearing into human flesh. If highly aggressive, then an encounter would involve severe slashing, biting and clawing along the legs of the human target, likely able to cut a human artery in a worst case scenario. I rate your survival a 9 out of 10. Now for an honourable mention. A personal favourite of mine, Poposaurus gracilis, a pseudosuchian reptile that lived 237 to 216 million years ago and resembled the theropod dinosaurs that would later rule the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Growing between 4 to 5 meters or 13 to 15 feet and weighing 90 to 100 kilograms, Poposaurus would pose a considerable threat to any unarmed human. Its strong leg muscles able to outrun a human over short distances and armed with a large jaw full of sharp teeth would slice and tear apart flesh, causing extreme damage and blood loss. Upon encountering this animal, an attack would be imminent, and your chances of survival would be moderate at best. I rate this encounter a 5 out of 10 with considerable injury. With over 3 species described, the largest size estimate of Protosuchus measures in at 1 meter and 40 kilograms. Armed with teeth resembling modern crocodiles and an incredibly powerful set of jaw muscles, makes this reptile considerably dangerous, more akin to an attacking German shepherd. Believed to be an effective swimmer and runner, despite its columnar legs, an attack from Protosuchus would involve a bone-crushing bite with deep lacerations, likely able to incapacitate the limb it has chosen to strike. A human's best chance would likely involve a series of punches and kicks aimed at the eyes, but severe bite wounds and lacerations would be incurred, giving you a 7 out of 10 chance for survival. Similar in size is Aripasuchus, with larger members like A. reaching 1 meter and 40 kilos in weight, but had thin osteo 
terms due to a terrestrial dominant lifestyle. With very large skull orbits and eyes, this crocodilian had excellent eyesight which aided its predatory lifestyle. Equipped with large teeth and a jaw measuring at 13 centimeters, Rhipasuchus would pose a considerable threat to a human, likely attempting predation. But a human's inherent height advantage would give it the edge with strong kicks and eye pokes being effective, giving you a slightly higher 8 out of 10 rating. Emerging 7 million years after the dinosaur's extinction, there are 12 species of Diplocynodont. The largest size estimates come in at 3 meters or 9.8 feet. An opportunistic aquatic predator, this alligatoroid resembles a typical crocodile or rather alligator and likely would not target humans unless an opportunity presented itself. Inferring from behavior of extant saltwater crocodiles that only target a human-sized prey at 12 feet or longer, your chances of survival would be very high at 9 out of 10. A lot Pasukas had several members but the one we will focus on is a Hulky. Living in Eperemal ponds and floodplains, a Hulky had several adaptions for extended life on land, needing to travel from one body of water to another. Large sinuses in its skull helped reduce weight and aid in hearing outside of water. Well-developed muscle attachments on the scapula, humerus and ulna bones enabled a semi-erect stance similar to extant alligators. Growing to a maximum 3 meters, a lot Pasukus would likely be capable of short bursts of speed and opportunistic predate on an unaware human target. But a direct confrontation would be unlikely, giving you an 8 out of 10 chance for survival. Genuinely taking me aback as I did not know crocs like this existed, the Phalotosuchia suborder of crocodiliforms are fully aquatic marine reptiles possessing a tail fluke and hip anatomy enabling live birth. The first is Geosaurus, measuring between 2.5 to 3 meters. This marine predator would pose significant danger in its marine environment, easily outswimming any human athlete. Fleet. Similar in size and morphology is Metriohyunchius and Neptune Draco, which literally means Neptune's dragon, at a slightly larger 3.7 meters. These marine predators would easily outmaneuver a human in water, repeatedly biting the legs and arms before blood loss or drowning takes effect. Your only real chance of survival would be to swim to shore or get very lucky with an eye poke. I rate your chances of survival a 3 out of 10. Coming in at 4 to 5 meters, meters was Dacosaurus. An apex predator of the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous, this marine reptile possessed enlarged supratemporal fenestrae anchoring large abductor muscles producing a tremendously powerful bite. Combined with a triangular skull and deeply rooted serrated and latiomedially compressed teeth and a bulbous deep mandibular symphys, this thing would literally twist and tear flesh from any victim, kind of like a death roll. A predation attempt would likely leave no chance for survival. Your only hope would be to slowly swim to shore, praying this thing doesn't take a bite. 1 out of 10, this isn't Bucky. Warranting its own video based off the name alone, Amaldosuchus arudi was a heavily armoured terrestrial carnivore with fused hexagonal osteoderms along its neck, followed by seven bands resembling modern armadillos. To further bolster its defence, the ribs were thickened by a process known as pachyostosis. Toothed and indicates an omnivorous diet with large canines, incisors and molar form located within a skull of 12 inches long. Growing to 2 meters or 6.7 feet and weighing 40 to 60 kilos, Amaldosuchus presents an interesting challenge of armor versus effective attacks. A human would have to focus any attack to the head region to inflict any meaningful damage. Running would likely trigger a chase with Amaldosuchus biting an ankle or foot causing severe damage before likely targeting the neck region as you fall to the ground. I rate your survival a 6 out of 10. Going extinct only 10,000 years ago in Australia, Pincana was moderately sized at 10 feet and 200 kilograms. Known for its zippodont teeth, four species have been described. Likely an intermediate process between terrestrial and aquatic, Quincana would look very similar to extant alligators as it walks on land, moving from one source of water to another. A predation attempt would quickly prove fatal if caught unaware, especially should you be near a source of water, giving you a 7 out of 10 survival rating. 
found across Europe and North America in the late Jurassic, Goniopholis kipalingi, had a skull reaching 18.72 inches and overall length of 11.4 feet, reaching a size large enough to predate human-sized prey. An encounter would likely result from a direct predation attempt along a river or lake. Your chances of survival would be a 7 out of 10. Shattering the illusion that all crocodilians were aquatic in the late Cretaceous, Borosuchus lived 90 to 83 and a half million years ago in Brazil, inhabiting a hot and arid climate. Adaptions for its terrestrial lifestyle include a laterally compressed snout and teeth similar to theropod dinosaurs. Growing to 10 feet and weighing 115 kilograms, this land crocodile is hinted to have hunted similar to extant Komodo dragons, employing an ambush predation and rapid powerful bites with sharp serrated teeth. An encounter with Aurorosuchus would be akin to finding a giant Komodo dragon. Your chances of survival would be 50-50 with severe injuries. One upping Borosuchus is Caprosuchus. Confusion over being fully terrestrial or semi-aquatic, Caprosuchus possessed three sets of large canines not seen in any other crocodiliform. Growing just over 12 feet, Caprosuchus would target human-sized prey employing ambush tactics along riverbanks, but also having the ability to give chase on land should the need arise. I rate your chances a 6 out of 10. Growing to 13 feet, Mahaginosuchus would be of a size where predation of human-sized prey would be commonplace or frequently attempted. No longer an opportunistic hunter, like crocodilians of smaller sizes, a human would be seen as a viable food source with frequent predation attempts of ambush predation owing to Mahajanasuka's semi-aquatic adaptations. Taking a look at its skull, this croc would be more than capable of overpowering a human, giving you a 6 out of 10 survival rating. Going to the larger boys now, Stomatosuchus enormous could reach 10 meters or 33 feet, with a skull measuring 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet in length, but its bizarre skull structure leaves some confusion over how this thing hunted. Believed to have a pouch like modern pelicans, Stomatosuchus would scoop up fish, turtles and other small prey where its conical teeth would prevent escape. It is unclear if this large crocodilian would attempt predation on a human, but assuming it does, you would have a fair chance of survival as long as you remain on land with a 7 out of 10 rating. Leaving no room for confusion, Sarcosuchus was a gigantic crocodilian with S. Imperator measuring at 30 feet and weighing 4.3 metric tons at the larger estimates. Known to hunt many large dinosaurs with overwhelming jaw strength, encountering one on land would be relatively safe so long as you keep your distance. But if near a body of water, an ambush predation attempt from Sarcosuchus would be almost non-survivable. Thanks to its enormous size, there would be very little you could do to escape its jaws. Should you find yourself in the water with Sarcosuchus, your best option would be to pray and make peace. You are not making it to shore, a 2 out of 10 if you are on land. Going extinct only 5.3 million years ago, Perusaurus was a gigantic caiman capable of reaching 34 feet and 5.5 tons in weight. Across all known species, the teeth measure around 5 centimeters or 2 inches. Believed to have predated on the large megafauna of the Miocene, employing ambush predation along rivers or lakes. Like Sarcosuchus, if encountering one on land, your chances of surviving are pretty solid. But if you happen to be near a large body of water, it is very unlikely you would survive a predation attempt. I rate your chances of survival a grisly 1 out of 10. Having recently made a video for this one, Dinosuchus is considered to be the largest crocodilian to ever exist. Reaching 35 feet and 5.5 tons in weight, Dinosuchus hunted using overwhelming force with a skull measuring at 1.35 meters or 4.4 feet. The same rules apply, if encountered on land, you need only walk away, but if you are near a body of water and a predation attempt occurs, the rush from Dinosuchus would be catastrophic. With a bite force stronger than that of T-Rex, a single bite would literally shatter the bones and explode the flesh. Think of putting your arm into a hydraulic press. The good news is, you would likely be dead before being pulled into the water. The bad news is, you are dead. Large saltwater crocodiles are known to be devastatingly effective hunters to unaware humans. God forbid one at five and a half tons. I rate your chances of survival a one out of ten.
Often overlooked in favour of the dinosaurs, crocodilians are a unique and diverse clade of reptiles, having survived for 225 million years. Today's crocodiles are a literal living relic of a time never to come again. If you disagree with anything in this video, be sure to leave a comment down below. But if you enjoyed the video, then hit that subscribe button and make sure to like the video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I will see you in the next video.